Robert, can you go down uh, injury wise uh, from the game and also with specifically uh, Elijah, Jeff, and Jeff Smith? Yeah, uh, Jeff Smith is uh, uh, still going through the protocol. Uh, Elijah Moore looks like he's uh, he's coming out of it, so he's they're they're both going to be day to day. Uh, same thing with um, uh, Eccles, and then uh, th those are the biggest concerns. Everyone else is uh, looking good for Sunday. Robert, what's the what's the challenge of this week like? Uh, so, oh, I'm sorry, Brian. He got an echo, I think. Um, what's the challenge of this week like? You guys are creatures of habit, coaches and players, with your schedules, and obviously this is going to be an unusual week for you with the travel. You know, it, it, it's a tricky week, but uh, you know, the, uh, fortunately, I've uh, I've been been a part of this game three times when I was in Jacksonville. We went three consecutive years, uh, and in my three years, we tried it once, leaving right after our Sunday game. Uh, we tried it once, uh, leaving on a Monday, and then we did it on uh, we left on a Thursday. So we have a, a really good. We feel like we have a really good plan, travel plan going in. So to keep it as normal as possible for our guys, and uh, it's just a matter of getting in there. Uh, uh, getting acclimated to the time change and playing on Sunday. Robert, what's been the key for this defensive line and pass rush in general? Uh, yeah, I think that quarter in Green Bay and Carl went down and all of us were found to play, you know, pass rush might not be there. What's been the key for that uh, rushing like they have? You know, for uh, one, it's, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'd like to talk about Aaron Whitecott and he's our defensive line coach. I think he does a phenomenal job with regards to technique and helping these guys get ready to play ball. Uh, but at the same time, the, the veteran leadership in that group and the, and the mindset and the drive and all that has been uh, up there. They're, they're just about as good as anybody uh, in football in terms of that, uh, how, how cool that room is built. But, uh, but, you know, we, we talk about it all the time with Russian coverage, you know, we've got a young secondary back there who's, doing everything they can to buy the, buy the D line a hitch on the, on the quarterback. And if that quarterback hitches, our D line is taking a lot of pride in making sure that he gets hit. And uh, so it's, it's a, it's really a team game. And if, if our D line or if our back end wasn't covering the way they were, our D line, doesn't matter how good they are, they'd never get home. And uh, so I think it's just a good compliment of uh, Russian coverage and, and obviously the mindset of the D line to get home and make them pay as quickly as, as they can. Robert on the D line um, and sort of, after Carl went down, I remember a few of those guys talking about, he said to them, like, you know, the standard doesn't change and kind of spoke to them. Did you feel them kind of galvanize there that, you know, I think everyone expected such a big year from Carl that, that, you know, those, those guys knew then, okay, everyone needs to step it up. You know, I, I don't know if everyone felt the need to step up more than they were. I think those guys always try to bring their best every single day and they've, uh, they've really taken ownership. Like I'm, I'm very vocal. Uh, uh, and our defense is very vocal. Albrecht's very vocal with the fact that we win and lose based on our D line on the on that side of the ball. They're the heartbeat of this football of that side of the ball, and uh, uh, they they take ownership in that. And obviously, it's still a team game, and uh, the the young guys in the back end are doing a phenomenal job giving them the time to get home. But uh, but that D line takes pride in, uh, in in what they represent for this team, and and they're they're a bunch of dogs, and they play their butts off, and it, it shows every Sunday. Robert, you mentioned, you mentioned the guys in the back end. Um, and I think I asked you this a couple of weeks ago about those young guys that, you know, you, you talked up uh, during camp that maybe outside the facility didn't really know their names and that kind of thing. Um, how have they played? I mean, yesterday it seemed that for the most part, they all played pretty well in that secondary. You know, they're, they're, they're getting better every day. That's the, that's the best part about it. You know, they're, um, they're going to continue to get challenged. Our system, like I said, we get very, very aggressive and, and they're out on an island. Um, and so you saw uh, yesterday, a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities uh, uh, deep. And uh, at the same time, we're, you know, it's our job as coaches to make sure we, we kind of disguise that, but, uh, but they're going to get tested. There's going to be times where they get caught and they've got to go win on, win those one-on-one -on -one battles. It's like we've talked about all along, you know, the, this game of football is about winning one-on-ones and third down in two minutes uh, at all levels of, of football, whether you're offense or defense. And uh, and those guys right now are doing a really nice job in those situations. With regard to Zach, we tend to focus on the splash plays, but from a coaching perspective, after watching it again um, today or last night, what are some of the, maybe the subtle nuanced things that you saw in his game that were improved over last week? 
so you know we we I, I we take we we say this thing about boring football and uh you know we're, we're not looking for charlie checkdown that's that's for sure right we we still want him to be aggressive like we said but we also want him to take his to be smart with the ball and you know what gets lost in the excitement of the explosive plays that he generated it was at 14 i think it was 14 of his 18 completions were for seven yards or less uh he didn't get hit there were balls getting out of his in and out of his hands he had a uh I don't have the QB rating in front of me or anything, but I, I know he was very efficient and he can play that style of ball. But uh, and and there was even more to be had in those situations, as we're all aware, the third down to close out the game, the uh, the, the shallow cross to Griff to close out the game. Like there, there are ops for even more, uh, which he'll get better at. But uh, but at the same time, everyone saw the creativity and, and the off schedule stuff that um, is getting all the attention. But that represented four of his completions. and. Um, and so he's he's in he's in a really he's in really good headspace. His mindset's in the right spot in terms of he knows that he can be even better, and uh, and those are things that he'll continue to grow on. Robert, I asked you about screenplays a few weeks ago, and you know you said it's going to be a constant, and it was yesterday too. What um what'd you tell your defense about defending the screens after yesterday's game? You know there was uh try to explain this the right way. So, you know, on a couple of occasions, you, you really, you really have to trigger, uh, especially if you're one of the underneath defenders, you're sitting in zone, you've got to trigger your D lines getting up the field on one of them, uh, felt like we were in really good position. Um, you know, it just, two of them didn't work out the way we wanted, but I do know that as the game went on, I believe Quincy had a big, uh, a big shot on the screen that, uh, uh resulted in the TFL. I think it was on tight end. Uh, I'm forgetting, but, uh, but it's it's always going to be a constant occurrence, Brian. Like we can, you're going to be able to ask me this question every single week. Now we don't want to give up explosives in the screen game. That third and twenty one is an uh, third and twenty one that they were able to get out of was inexcusable. Uh, I don't care what type of defense you are. Uh, we got to be better in those situations for sure. But uh, but those are going to be things that we're always talking about and we'll continue to work on. We'll always preach. But they're about effort, setting edges, D line getting out of the stack, and. Uh, and it's 11 people hunting to the ball, taking proper angles, being disciplined, uh, turning things back so people in pursuit can catch up. But so when you when you really look, dive into those screen plays, you'll see guys pressing to try to make a play rather than do your job and make sure that you're getting it to the person who needs to make the play. Because uh, if one person slips a gap, it slips out, now it's too far away. So it's just it's a matter of a combination of just just do your job, run your tail off to the ball and, and the screen will take care of itself, but uh, we'll get better at it as the year goes on, but it's always going to be something that we get, especially with our D line hunting the way it is. And people see it on tape, the the better your pass rush, the more screens you're going to see. That's just going to be forever in the day. Robert, is, is there a player on offense or defense that, that maybe we haven't talked about or, or is it maybe getting as, as much um, attention because of statistics or anything like that, that that has stood out to you whether it was through training camp or, or now the first month of the season um you know I, honestly i'm not i'm not sure i'm trying to i'm not sure who you guys are pumping up i'll be honest but uh <laughs> um i'm trying to think you know if there's there's an unsung hero on offense defense you know it's just it's collectively i mean i think i think they're all taking turns i think you get you get recognized in wins. Obviously, everyone's gonna, you know, to the spoil to the victor goes the spoils, right? And uh, and so a lot of guys are being recognized for all their work. I think uh, Huff, uh, Bryce Huff, has done a phenomenal job filling in for uh, Carl Lawson. I think um, obviously I can go through the whole D line; they're all doing fantastic. I think Quincy Williams. I think Joe Douglas did a great job picking him up off waivers, and and you see Quincy has been getting better every week and. He still has a lot of stuff to get uh, to get better at, but you saw the splash plays and the explosiveness and the speed and length that that fits our defense. Uh, you see the young corners uh, playing to the, to the level they are, and then on the flip side, you know uh, Corey had a bad string of a, a few quarters, and and then he came to life uh, uh, there in the second half and and was just absolutely dominant. And uh, the backs, Michael Carter had his first touchdown. Uh, so they're, and then the O line, I thought the O line protected their tails off yesterday. I, I think the quarterback took one sack and, uh, just overall, I thought the, the entire group just fought their tails off. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people talking about, I mean, punter stepping in for the injured, for, for our, for our injured punter, uh, uh Mo has been doing a phenomenal job. So there, there's, there's a lot of, uh, praise to go around, uh, Connor. 
Robert, on the third and one play, that the one that Zach took the loss at the goal line, what exactly was the play called? Because it, it didn't look like he had many options there. I think there might have been only one receiver on that side of the field. So how was that drawn up? Yeah, it was that, that was a run pass option. So it's uh, you're, you're selling hard on the power. See if you can capture the edge. If you capture the edge, run. But there's supposed to be someone uh, running a corner route right there, tight end, the near side tight end. You can see him coming in late when you guys get the all 22. But he he kind of got caught up in the in, in the uh, in the pile and he couldn't get out. So uh, Zach thought he could turn the corner. Probably should have just thrown it away and given us a chance on fourth and goal from the one. Robert, I know but you tried to work out the way it did. It worked out pretty good. <laughs> Robert, I know you try to stay steady, win lose, you know, no matter what happens, but. Is there a different feeling in the building today? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's always better to win, right? Because it's easier to have conversations. People aren't as, as sensitive to, to hard conversations. So, you know, there, there's an old saying that you go harder when you win. But it's, the reality is you, you just do it the same. You treat both imposters the same, whether you win or you lose. And um, and it's a roller coaster of football, you know, like you lose, it's the apocalypse. I mean, it's the end of the world. It's Armageddon. Uh, you win. and Everyone wants to shower, shower you with champagne and stuff. It's you just got to stay, stay in the moment and understand that there's ways to get better. There's things that you can learn off of. It's easier uh, to have a conversation with a young man who's less sensitive because there's, you know, when in a in victory, but in loss, everyone's a little bit, a little more sensitive. Everyone's a little bit more defensive. So uh, the conversations are easier, but they're still very, they're just as important. Did it mean anything for you to get your first win? And did you hear from a lot of people uh, in your life about it? Yeah, you know what? It's I was uh, I was texting with my cousin last night, and he said, you know, I didn't want to bother you the last three weeks, and just know we're there cheering for you. And I said, nobody wants to text the loser. Don't don't kid yourself. <laughs> but uh, I was, but I, I you know there um, uh, it it's cool you know that uh, you know I, I just remember two thousand. Uh, 17 with Kyle and we we're sitting there 0 and 9 and we're like oh my god you know just so far in the season and so he gave me a cool text this morning and said hey at least you didn't have to wait until as long as we did and, uh, so I'm glad it's over and now we can just get to work. I think a couple more for coach a couple more. Robert, we've little. talked about uh, CJ and his impact but now that he's gotten accustomed playing differently now you know than what he's used to what have you seen in terms of his growth and what he's been able to do for you guys? Oh man, um, you guys know me with my infatuation for the man. I think he's phenomenal. Um, so I'll, I'll give you guys one. He um, he did something we've never had a linebacker do in our system. Uh, we had you guys. Um, it was a sack, and if you listen to the TV copy, uh, and you guys see him, he is demonstrative, and it looks like he's making a play call, like he's changing the defense, and which he is. Uh, which we don't do. Once a call goes in, we're rolling. And uh, and he saw something that he didn't like. He got us into another defense, and the entire sideline, all us coaches, like, what is Rudy? What is he doing? And we're just yelling at the linebacker coach, and uh, and he got us into the perfect play call, and we got got a sack because the uh, quarterback hitched. And uh, I was like, well, that's why he's an all-pro. <laughs> so good job, CJ. And he was he was pumped and proud of that moment and uh, and deservedly so. He studies a lot of tape and uh, he knew exactly what we needed to be in. He fixed the call and, and we and we got off the field on third down. Will he have more freedom to do that in the future now, Robert? Uh, I don't know about I don't know about that one because <laughs> there's a rhyme or reason for why we call those. But uh, I mean, we were on the field for so many plays. I think I think we're on our like our. 15th or 17th. I mean, usually you get 12 to 15 third downs. We were approaching 20. And, uh, and by then it's like, it, that, that's where I talk about like in the first quarter, it's the game plan. The second quarter is feeling each other out. The third quarter is the adjustments. The fourth quarter, everything's on the table. It's over. And it's who's going to flinch first, who's going to execute the high, uh, at the highest level and who's going to flinch because there's no more secrets. And it happened in the fourth quarter and there's no more secrets. The players know the checks. They, are, they know all the verbiage. They know exactly what's happening. And, uh, and he made an executive decision. I'm glad he did. Uh, so what does it say? From, uh, what, what is it? What does it say about his mindset, uh, Robert? That you know, because he knows he's not supposed to change it, but he go ahead, goes ahead and do it anyway. It must have been a strong conviction that he had. Uh, how, how did that conversation go with with him afterward? Oh, uh, there, there's not much conversation there. I mean, it, it, 
and so it goes back. It goes back to he got to taste a little bit of what coaching is. He made a check. It worked. You're a genius. If it wouldn't have worked, we wouldn't be talking about this. I wouldn't tell you guys about it, but it would have been one of those, hey, dude, you can't do that. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but it worked. But it shows us, you know, he's he is like a, he's like a cheat code. You know, he's, his mind is at a plays at a different level. He's playing a different game. And uh, and uh, he knew exactly what we needed to get into. And, and he and he made he made the right call.